Hey everyone, Sky King here, and I want to take you through a quick tool that I found in Quixel Mega Scans. Uh, also, the Quixel Mixer, I guess, is what the tool is actually called here. But this is the block tool, and it's a very cool tool, and this is the kind of results we can expect to get. It's something that looks like this. Now, there are plenty of scans in Quixel that give you this effect, but it's not really editable right so maybe you don't like the size of the blocks or you don't like the stone textures or the dirt texture this is a completely non-destructive way of creating custom block layouts in any scan that you want with any filler dirt that you want any color it, it's ridiculous so let's dive into it and i'm going to show you what what i've done here so first thing i've done is i've created a solid layer and put a color on it and i will show you why here in a second the next thing I have is just this cracked lichen rock. It's very basic stone scan. It's actually one of my favorite scans. I use it all the time. What we're gonna do is right click our cracked lichen rock here and we are going to hit add mask stack right there. And now you just get this blank column over here on the right. What we can now do is we can go to pattern square and now you can see it's created these squares out of our rock scan what it's actually done is it's it's added a a displacement layer basically what's really cool is that it also translates to the normal map right now here's why i added the solid layer if you take the solid layer away it doesn't seem to work as well. Okay, so just using this solid layer kind of adds this little foundation to it and it seems to work nicely. So let's let's bounce into this pattern maker here, right? First of all, you have this placement. So we have repeats and spacing. It is exactly what it sounds like. So there's your spacing difference. Okay, and I'm gonna put this back to about 0.25 and 0.25 for right now. Next is your repeats. And so you can repeat it this way for a cool little brick looking layout. And you, or you can match up the numbers and make little squares. You can do big squares like that. Like if you wanted to do just two big blocks. You wanna play some four square you want to play some some checkers I mean uh, some tic-tac-toe here right so we're gonna do something like four and four let's do let's do something else let's do six and six and it doesn't matter because we can always change it later now the spacing I like and now we can go to jitter and this is where things start really getting fun so brightness jitter is going to vary the height of the blocks as you can see right here now you can set your threshold. So if it's all the way up, there's no height difference. And then you can bring it down to where it starts varying the height difference. And then you can random seed to just kind of vary it up and find a layout that you like. And what I like to do is press T so you can see a very large map and kind of find a random seed to where you don't see a lot of step and repeat. Okay. And then lastly, the amount is how intense you want the effect. And a little goes a long way, okay? A little goes a long way. So threshold and random seed kind of go hand in hand with each other, in my opinion, right? But let's, let's look at something like this right here, okay? And it doesn't look like there's much going on, but trust me, there is. The next up is gradient jitter, and this you kind of have to be careful with because, again, a lot goes a long way. But what this does is it angles certain tiles. You see what this has happened here now? So if you're really looking for that old distressed look, and what something I like to do, again, is kind of find something that's less is more type of a deal. We're not looking for something too crazy 
just a little bit. And you can sit here and work the amount to get different, like how how much, just like the brightness jitter, how, how heavy handed, I guess you could say it is. All right. Next up you have size jitter and size jitter just makes them random sizes. Kind of don't use this, but it would be um, beneficial. Bevel does exactly what you think it would do. It bevels the edges. So if we turn the bevel all the way up and then you can work the, bell cur uh, the bevel curve to be more of a sharp bevel or a rounded bevel. So I'm gonna use something like this right here. We don't really need that because of some other things we're gonna do, but we'll put that in there for right now. And then lastly, this cutout is you can remove random blocks, which is awesome. And then again, work your random seed here to find something that doesn't step and repeat too much. You can pull it out your view and press T and just find something that doesn't look, that's not identifiable as, as, as a, uh, kind of step in repeating, right? That looks pretty good to me. So now with that done, we can kind of adjust here this and let's turn on a ground. So I got this gravel pattern here and I'm just this gravel scan, shall I say. And there you go. There's you a basic tiled floor, right? But I think we can take it a little bit further. So we're going to click back on our mask stack here real quick. And I'm going to add a noise pattern using Warly 2. We're going to turn off the ground pattern here. And we're going to set this to multiply. So when you set it to multiply, it just affects the layer below it. So when it's just on normal, it does the whole thing. Multiply does it just to the blocks. Okay. And here you can kind of, what we're looking for is just some soft kind of breakup here. So without it, with it, you see what we've done. Okay. Next up, I'm going to add a brightness and contrast map. And this I'm also going to set to multiply because I just want it to affect the Warly. So we have contrast and you can really just kind of kill those stones there. And then you can work the opacity of that to fine tune where you want it to be. Next up, I'm going to add a blur. And this is going to be over everything. Here we can again adjust this blur. And this is kind of where I was saying with the curve bevel, how you kind of don't need it. Also want to get this contrast. It is set to multiply, good, okay. So next, what I'm going to do is one more thing. And that's going to be adding another noise, but I'm gonna add a Perlin noise. This is also gonna be set to multiply. And let's do something that kind of really pumps it up here. All right. There we go. So now when we bring our ground back in, You kind of have this more rocky looking texture here. And if you don't like anything, you can always go back and reset things up or turn things off however you see fit. And that's it. Simple as that. Now, let's take another example here. Let's say 
It's too many blocks. We want something that's like two by two. Simple. You just go down here and just change your repeating here. And there you are. You may have to adjust some other things because these filters do apply based on scale. I'm also going to get rid of the gradient jitter. The brightness we can adjust. Again, if you want it different, you can do that. Now let's talk about like maybe we want a cobblestone look. So let's pump this up to like 15. And we'll do by, let's do this at 15. And we'll do this by like 12. And that's cool, but it's a bit too uniform. So what I'm gonna do is this offset. And now we're starting to get into cobblestone land. We can go back into our blur, kind of round them up, round them off a little bit. Pull our ground texture up a touch. Maybe we'll throw a throw a liquid on here. And now you got yourself a cobblestone. Maybe we could do a moss instead. And now we got cobblestones. So really it's kind of limitless on what you can do quickly just with a few filters and the block tool. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. Enjoy it. Go check it out. Explore. See what you can create and then let me know.